If you have an unquenchable thirst to crush your bucket list, relentlessly pursue your dreams, and live life on your own terms, then turn up the volume and tune in. You're now listening to Zeph and Moses Blacksburg on the Year of Purpose podcast. This episode of the Year of Purpose is brought to you by our brand new book, Life Rescripted. Find your purpose and design your dream life before the curtains close. If you want to be the first in line to receive a free digital copy from me, all you have to do is head on over to www.liferescriptedbook.com to find out more. Hey everyone, this is Zephan Blacksburg with the Year of Purpose podcast, and today I'm joined by Ellery. And Ellery is a personal business coach who specializes in effective and efficient ways to get new entrepreneurs off the ground. He is the Amazon number one best selling author of How to Start Your Professional Podcast for $200 or Less. He has over 15 years of sales experience, and before starting his own business, he spent four years as the top salesperson in one of the largest IT companies in the world. Ellery shares his knowledge and experience experience with the readers on his blog and listeners to his podcast. Connect with him on Facebook and on Twitter and today right here on the Year of Purpose. What's happening? Hey, Zevin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So you ultimately uh, left the corporate world, maybe in a different fashion than most. Some people get a choice, some people don't. And uh, so just before we hopped on, you were telling me a little bit about how uh, you didn't exactly have a choice. So maybe we'll start there with, you know, what were you doing for work and uh, how did you ultimately uh, have to get out of it? (laughs) Sure. You know, that's a a great question. I'm glad you, you started there because I feel like there's so many people who are like, oh, I had this wonderful full six-figure job. I was making all this money and I decided I'm going to pursue my dreams. I'm gonna... Well, I I never quite got to six figures and I didn't get to leave there and just make this uh, magical life living on the beach happen overnight. Well, I'm obviously not on the beach anyway. Um, yeah, I was, I was fired and before that I was the most, I don't have my, I've boxed up the trophies, but <laughs> I was the most awarded salesperson in a $2 billion business unit full of 150 inside sales reps. I was sales rep of the year, sales rep of the quarter. Uh, I was one of the few people that got a raise every year. We didn't get them quarterly or anything like that, and it was only like 3%, but I was one of the only few people who got one of those, and I sold computer servers, software, uh, software services, Pretty much the entire uh, portfolio for Dell to education accounts, worked with schools and things like that. And I loved it because I got to talk, not only talk about computers, but I got to see the new stuff before it came out. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of the term nerd or geek or whatever, but I love tech toys. I love uh, gadgets and those kinds of things. So I got to not only talk about it, but see what was coming out next. I was successful, but I was kind of average, uh, just didn't I wasn't the born entrepreneur either. I didn't have a lemonade stand at age four, like some <laughs> people. You know, so I'm not the the cliche typical entrepreneur, had all the success, all this money, and then decided to give it all up to do this. Uh, and hopefully because of that, and because I'm not that way, I can connect with more people, Zeph, and yeah, just the average guy looking for something different. There was a long process, long runway between when I started what I'm doing now and when I actually left Dell. And uh, that that runway has definitely helped and is worth worth talking about, especially when you're talking about a year of purpose. Right. I had three years, two and a half years of purpose before <laughs> before I made that switch. But that's what I did. I was uh, I was an IT salesperson and uh, didn't wear a suit and tie. I wore usually shorts and a polo shirt because we were casual. But uh, that's that's me, or at least the corporate part of me. So. Yeah. And so let me ask you real quick, just before moving on from that, what do you think it was that made you such a good salesman? I mean, obviously those those trophies and all those awards don't just come from, you know, being being an average Joe who who gets a sales job. Uh, you know, I think there are a couple of reasons and I've been asked this question by some of the account executives, some directors and all up and down the the corporate ladder there. Uh a couple things. One is I I really liked at least in the beginning, what I was talking about. Mm. Towards the end, it became check the boxes and all of the admin stuff and it had very little to do with selling. And so as the 
the people part became less of an emphasis. My joy also went down. So I, I, I really had, I believed in the product. Um, I still will buy Dell products. I'm on one right here. It's over here. Um, so I believed in the product. I had a passion for it. I was genuinely interested in it as far as the company side goes. And then as far as the, the customer part goes, I, I built relationships with people. I would be able to recognize their voice when they called on the phone because it was all over the phone. I didn't do chat or anything like that. But I made it a goal, and this is something that I talked about on the Sales Evangelist podcast that Donald Kelly does. He asked me a very similar question. And it says, I, I, what I told him is what I tell you, is I, I tried to know three things about every single person that I talked to that really didn't have a whole lot to do with work, business, or their job. So, you know, where, where they grew up, um, even something as dumb as the weather mm. or where their kids lived or what they were interested in or just some of their backgrounds and hobbies. I knew one lady who was remodeling her bathroom, so we would always talk, hey, how's the bathroom remodel going? Oh, it's going well. Or we decided to do something else, and that was the lead into the product uh, conversation. I built relationships with these people and, again, tried to know three things at least three about that person that did not have to do with work. So it was a personal call and um, I became the guy who lived the town over from, you know, their son or their daughter or it's raining where they live and it's probably raining where Ellery lives. And I, I became that person instead of the sales guy. Gotcha. So. And I'm sure that probably played out into a lot of things after the fact, you know, especially just with connecting with new clients and new people that you're meeting, um, you know, once you start your own business. So maybe just walk me through, I mean, what happens after getting fired? I mean, you wake up the next day and what do you do with yourself? So I, I was, <laughs> I guess, unemployed for the drive home. I immediately got home and started, I sat down right where I am now and got to work. And honestly, and maybe this will help someone, I don't, are, is the audience of your show mostly, are they wanting to be entrepreneurs? Are they wanting to start something? Tell me about them first, because not that I will change my answer, but yeah, I'll I mean, give I'd something say to help them. They're definitely a good mix of people who are looking to leave uh, the corporate world for entrepreneurial uh, pursuits. Um, some of them are already entrepreneurs and just looking to develop, okay. you know, themselves as as a person. But yeah. So again, not to I'm not not changing my answer at all. I, I picked up where I left off that I'd been start of what I've been doing for the last almost exactly two years at that point. So I got fired on January 17th, 2014. I started my blog on uh, January 30th, 2012. So I'd been doing this for two years. Wasn't making a whole lot of money, hadn't generated a whole lot of revenue, but I'd had a couple products. I developed relationships. I'd been blogging regularly. People know who I was, what I stood for, those kinds of things. So when I got home, I continued doing those things. And I knew I had to make money because um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to go back and put all of my eggs in one basket and go back to work for somebody else immediately again. So to get that first coaching client, for example, I went to the people who had mentioned working with me in the past over the last six months to a year, and I just said, hey, I just wanted to follow up on that. I'm no longer uh, at the company, and I'm gonna, I'm doubling down. I'm betting on myself. I'm gonna go after this, and I wondered if you're still interested in working with me. I've got some time, and I would love to, love to work with you, coach you, have you in a mastermind, whatever, whatever it would be. And that's what I did, and that's how I got my first coaching client. She'd reached out to me eight or nine months before I started work, uh, writing. I, I already had a podcast at that point, which it had only been around three or four months, um, so like 20 or 30 episodes, but I just went to work. I did the thing, that runway that I mentioned before, I just I just kept going on, uh, going on it in the same direction that I'd been before, which is why I think it's so important to, to start this, like you're talking about this, having purpose and intention in what you're doing, whatever goal it is you want to achieve, you've got to start way back so that you can either get that momentum or get that runway, that on-ramp, whatever it is, so that you are going 
to reach your goal. You can't just start today thinking, oh, I'm going to be successful tomorrow. You got to start six months ago. Right. It's like the it's like the phrase you've probably heard. When is the best time to plant a tree? Twenty years ago. When's the next best time? Today. It's the same thing when you're you're going when whatever it is that you want to achieve. It's that same principle. If you haven't started yet, the best time is when you're done listening to this episode, uh, or or taking notes or whatever you're doing. Start now. Yeah. And that's what I did. So let me ask you this: In building, you know, a meaningful life, do you think that it's possible to still work a job like that sales job? Uh, you know, had you not been let go from that position, do you think that you'd be anywhere remotely close to where you're at right now? No, because I didn't. I didn't think I could do it. I had an opportunity. There was a, a thing called the voluntary separation program. And it was basically a voluntary layoff, and I could have, I could have taken that. And my wife and I talked about it, uh, but I didn't believe I didn't believe that I, I could succeed. I had a lot of I've learned so much since then that knowing now what I or knowing then what I know now, I would have would have taken it. But can you do this while you're doing that? Uh, I think you have to. Yeah, and, or you could do both if you wanted to, but uh, I dis- I, <laughs> I guess I discovered my inner entrepreneur, and and the two were not compatible for me. For some people, it is because there's not a con um, a conflict. There's not a conflict between what you want to do and what you're already or what you're currently doing. Right. For me, there was, and that that's what I what you have to do. You have to do them both before you can do one or make the transition to full-time does that does that answer your question yeah i mean that it makes perfect sense and looking back at where i was you know having left my job in may of 2013 uh i had already been doing i run a video production company full-time so i had already been doing freelance work on the side for two maybe three years before i'd left that business so uh it wasn't anything new to me it was more of you know now it was just taking over my full uh attention span you know so i I had more time to dedicate to it and i could put more effort into it and ultimately have it take over the income that i was bringing in from the job yeah yeah Yeah, it's it's definitely a gradual transition we would love for it to be a light switch uh but it's it's a gradual transition, so yeah, yeah. I'm so, right with there with you. So how did you figure out, you know, what it was that you were gonna do and how you were gonna make money? I mean, it some people are sitting here in a job that has nothing to do with you know any of their skill sets. Uh, some of them might be thinking, you know, I would love to work for myself, but what I'm doing right now doesn't really apply in a you know entrepreneurial circumstances. Uh, you know, how do you? find out what it is that you can do and then ultimately leverage that to create a business I think the only way that you can figure it out because when you work for somebody else well let me let me let me even back up one step from there when we're starting at age four or five well before that we're told what to do don't sit there don't eat that don't kick that you know leave her alone stop poking and then you go to school and you're told where to sit what to go where to go what to do and then you go to high school same thing where to go and then if you go right into college like I did it's the same thing you're to- everything is dictated to you by someone else and then you go to a job and you just well I I got a degree in accounting so I guess I'm going to go be an accountant you know it's just that logical step and I don't want to say it's predestination from when you're four years old but we're for most of our life or at least up until you're 25 you're told what to do where to go right so whenever you're faced with this opportunity to do kind of whatever you want to do it's a little bit scary and the only way that you can figure it out is by trying things doing something because what i what i do now is not what I started off doing almost four years ago, and it's not really exactly what I did starting 18 months ago-ish uh, in January of last year. It, it, the only way to figure it out is by by doing it. And for me anyway, and I hope I hope this works and applies to everybody else but for me, now I get to use all those strengths, you know, if you the strengths finder and all those whatever personality tests, uh, 
all of the things that had I thought made me kind of um, again not not nerdy or not I don't know the right term there, but I, I I've always asked a lot of questions. And I've always tried to get to the root of a problem. My degrees in psychology, I wanted to know why people do things, why they behave the way they do. And then in the corporate world, I'm like, well, why do we do whatever sales techniques or hardware wise and all that? And all those things that people t- told me, stop asking questions, just accept it. It's got to love corporate America, right? Right. All, <laughs> all those things that kind of made me quirky growing up and going through college and then corporate America are the things now that I, I leverage as part of my business. I analyze tools and say, these are the top 10 email resources for you, and here's why this is the best one. And I research and I analyze and I study and I give people information, which is cool to be paid for what you know instead of what what you can do or how many widgets you can assemble or whatever. Um, but I only figure that out by doing a bunch of different things, seeing what... Um, what helped people the most, what I enjoyed the most, because there's very little thing, there's very few things now that I do that I don't enjoy. So where my joy was, what I was good at, where those hidden strengths, those talents were that I could, that I've been using all along, and and how those three or four things kind of pooled together to where I, I can have the most impact on people, uh, and you only get to that spot by trial and error. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's been the key thing is to start, right? Like if, mm-hmm. if you don't start, you're never even going to get the option to, you know, transform or change. So, you know, when I first got started, I think one of the first things I did was I was doing wedding videography and that's a hundred percent what I don't want to do. And I know that now. And fortunately, I was able to change the type of clients I was going after and the people I was working with. And now all my video stuff is usually small businesses and tech startups. You know, but so you wouldn't have known that unless you had gone through and just <laughs> gone and done weddings and realized you didn't want to anymore. Right. It took having to deal with brides who were kind of <laughs> going a little nuts, you know, and it, it and some of them were good. Some of them were great, you know, easy to deal with, no problem. But it was the crazy ones that kind of ruined it for everybody. So, you know, that's where but that you're absolutely right. That opportunity wouldn't have happened, you know, unless I took the chance on myself and started that business. So I, I think that it really does just take getting started and you kind of do figure it out as you go. And we, we come from this world where we want someone to just give us the instructions of, you know, what do I have to do? Just give me a step by step. And it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, we definitely I, I'm reading a book called The Invisible Selling Machine by Ryan Dice, who does digital marketer. We got one in our swag bag from podcast. Yeah, got my copy over there. I actually have two copies. I've read it twice. <laughs> For uh, everybody that's watching the video, the cover looks like that. I'm almost done with it. But we're talking about lead ins in this chapter. And, and it's like, what is the quick fix? That one specific thing that that you can give people. And it's not in a weird way or a negative way. People, I mean, there are quick tips that you or I could give that would move the needle for somebody. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have become we have become this quick fix society. We don't want to or maybe maybe that's too much. Maybe I should say our first inclination is to not think hustle first, put in the work for a year and see what happens. It's what is that quick fix that can get me to that next level today immediately? Not and that's what he's talking about with these with these lead magnets and what you're what I think you are saying is is basically um, the same thing that that is from my experience it takes there are no quick fixes right it takes putting in the work yeah I mean there there won't be a magic wand now uh, as you've gotten into your business you've probably experienced a lot of similar things that I have you know I hired a coach which made a huge difference in my business the first year out. Um, wow, it just got really dark here. The sun must have gone behind a cloud. And um, so I, you know, I hired a coach. Uh, I joined a mastermind. I'm still in a mastermind. It's not the same one that I was in from the start, but you know, I have a meeting every single month with the same people, uh, and we kind of get together and talk about our businesses. Uh, so, what are some of the tools and things that you've been using that have allowed you to to build your business and grow it, you know, even higher? Um, tools that I use, I, 
Honestly, I, I think the master I, I also host paid masterminds, so I may be biased towards the mastermind, but that wasn't where I, I started. I've been meeting with a group of guys almost every week since a couple months after New Media Expo in 2014, which was two weeks before I got fired. The highest point, the the coolest experience, two weeks right before we don't want you here anymore. <laughs> so I've been meeting with them almost a week. Uh, or every week for right about 18 months and being around people that you, people who you can share your dreams with and they won't look at you like you're crazy or stupid, that has more value than most people would, would ever know because there's, there's a truth that's out there that people who aren't doing what you and I are doing, Zevin, who, who don't necessarily – they don't see the truth in it, and that's the fact that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And that could be if you hang around with skinny, healthy people who run marathons, there's a good chance you're a skinny person who runs marathons. Uh, if you're a super liberal or super conservative politically, you're probably right in the middle of either one of those groups. And the same thing applies to starting your own business. So I would attribute a lot of the success – that I've seen personally and I can see the results of my clients who go through the same thing where being able to talk about what you want to achieve and getting encouragement, support, but also the accountability and being able to say, hey, I just designed this landing page. Is it effective? Are there spelling errors? Does it work? Does it make sense? Just being able to test your ideas and, and use it as a sounding uh, – have a group of people you can use as a sounding board. That's There's a lot of value there. So uh, I would say that's been a key ingredient to, to the success that I've been able to have and the, and the friends that I've been able to make. Because if I wasn't in that one, I wouldn't be leading them now. Yeah. And I would say on top of being a, a good sounding board, uh, they're also a group of people that are going to cheer you on. You know, sometimes entrepreneurship can be, you know, relatively lonely uh, because it is it's a very challenging thing to take on. Uh, and, you know, you can at least have those people to celebrate your big wins with. Uh, ab absolutely. I mean, I would not have had I would not be able to claim best-selling Amazon best-selling author of how to start a professional podcast for $200 or less had it not been for my mastermind group. Um, a friend of mine, Jimmy Burgess joined our group. Uh, he does be more university.com. He teaches people how to, you know, tactics for marketing books and those kinds of things. Had it not been for him in my mastermind, um, I wouldn't be able to claim that. And I don't know what maybe has become a direct result of that. Um, uh, but if there was, the domino effect it all it, it would have started with that and that happened three or four months after i left dell so it, yeah. it's amazing to see what happens you know once you open yourself up to the possibilities yeah 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 you have it it you, there's a there's a certain thing about being in the right place at the right time and nobody's going to come to either one of us or anyone listening to this episode or watching it and no one's going to come to you and say hey you know, I, I can tell you've been working hard and I just want to give you money or hire you. I don't know what you, we have to prove our results. We have to show things and we have to be in the right place at the right time. And every podcast episode that you release or I release, every blog post that we write is putting something out there that could intersect with somebody at the right time. And uh, masterminds will definitely help you help you do that. And that was one of those things for me. Yeah, definitely. So where does this, uh, so you've got a best-selling book, how to start your professional podcast for $200 or less. Where does that fit in and, and how has that helped you just growing as a business owner and, you know, bringing in, uh, new clients? Well, my, let me answer it maybe even a different way. Sure. My next book is specifically for Entrepreneurs, the one I'm working on right now. Okay. That one, it was for podcasters. And I just, I saw, I, I saw a need and I met it. And that's what entrepreneurs do. I mean, pretty much at the, at the very base of that, even if it's that lemonade stand, the need is it's hot and people are thirsty and here's just some cold lemonade. Um, 
to me, that was, I saw a lot of people, and even for myself, I thought podcasting had to be expensive. I thought it had to be technical. I'm using pretty much the same setup now that I'm using or that I talked about in that book. I mean, these headphones wouldn't fit into that $200 budget. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, this microphone and you can use a stand or not. I I saw my one of the barriers for me getting into podcast po- uh, podcasting was the assumption that it had to be expensive. And I saw other people with cool ideas and great messages who also saw price and cost being an obstacle to get into podcasting. And I wanted to remove that. Mm. So to me, podcasting is is less the business and more a marketing tool. And that's why I wrote that. What has that done? It's exposed me to, well, a couple of things. The possibility that you can make passive income online, which is an incredible thing. It's also put my message in front of people around the world. Um, it has allowed me to be on a panel last year at Podcast Movement, and I did some speaking at this year's, um, at the Friday events before, partially because of of the success of that book. Um, and yeah, it doesn't pay a whole lot of bills, but I mean, it brings in money every single month. Right. So all of those things just go to show you that someone who had never bought a domain before, never heard the word WordPress bef- you know, four years ago, can now be doing what I'm, what I'm doing now. And, and that was one of those pivotal moments for me of this is possible. I can write a book. I can sell it around the world. I can, have, I can learn about distribution. I can learn about the Kindle. I can learn about self-publishing. Uh, there's all kinds of knowledge out there. And you, if you apply it in the right ways – you know your your reality changes your perspective is open the possibilities are just become crazy and all i don't want to say it all started from that book but um it didn't hurt it, yeah. it, it did not hurt well and to back up everything you're saying here look you know i started a program that has coached me through writing a book you know i've been very interested in in doing that and always had a bunch of ideas up here and wasn't really sure uh, how to get it out and, and how to best spread it. And, uh, you know, so I, I, A, I hired a coach, uh, you know, and I have an accountability person. So it's kind of like a very small mastermind. It's just myself and one other person. Uh, but within the last month alone, uh, I, someone who hates writing, uh, but is cool, totally cool with talking or typing, have created 35,000 words in a, you know, cohesive, uh, story, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's not just like this, you know, I, I just spurred out a bunch of stuff and it's, uh, going to be in a book. I'm, I'm, uh, hopefully going to be publishing it this winter. Uh, and it's almost done. The first, first draft is pretty much set to go. So, uh, yeah. I can kind of vouch for the whole, you know, you can really learn and master something in a very short period of time in the day and age that we live in now uh, and make a living off of it. Now, I haven't sold it yet, so I can't tell you how much money I'll make off of it. Uh, but I, I dare to say that it'll probably uh, be worth the time that I put in uh, over the course of this past month. Yeah, I mean, 35,000 words, that's probably like 130 pages of stuff, of yeah. material. And... Uh, proving that you can proving to yourself that you can do it proving the people that are following you your friends and family members um wife or girlfriend that when you go into the the home office and you lock yourself away for three or four hours that there is fruit to your labor <laughs> there's a reason there's a result of that it's pretty awesome congratulations yeah That's thank all. and you. Good luck. What can you can you share what the book's about, or is it is yeah. it under wraps? Yeah, no. So by the time this goes out, actually, there we will have some stuff online and available for people to check out. Uh, basically, it's called Life Rescripted, and so the whole story came out of you know me looking at the last year of my life, and so many people were like what changed for you? What was it that just, you know, things just exploded for me? I mean, I I had my business was on fire. I started the podcast. Thousands of people started listening. Uh, many great successes just with clients and things like that. You know, I did a video uh, in a partnership with Uber, the car company, oh, wow. uh, the ride sharing company, uh, along with one of my clients who is a business coach. So I got to make a video that kind of combined uh, this really cool thing that they did together. Um, you know, and I've just had a lot of amazing 
amazing opportunities come up. So when I kind of sat down and broke it down to its core of what is it that I did to make the difference in my life, uh, I took my roots from being a filmmaker and said, all right, well, there's a story and it all starts with the story. And you have to realize that you have the ability to change it. You are the director, you are the writer, you are the producer, and you're the editor. And you're also the casting manager. You pick and choose, just like you said, the five people that you're going to surround yourself with. And so the whole book is actually written in the layout of what it would be like to walk into a movie theater. Uh, And so the whole process of, you know, you get your tickets, you've got to pick out what type of genre you want your story to be. Uh, You go to the concession stand and you have to choose what items do you want to enhance the story or the experience? Do you want to get nachos and a giant soda and have to go to the bathroom in the middle of it? Or do you want, you know, a thing of M&Ms or gummy bears that you can kind of sit there and work your way through for the rest? of the movie um and and so yeah there you go (laughs) i'd probably kill off the twizzlers before the previews are done though (laughs) those things are good (laughs) and so yeah so that that's the book and uh for everyone listening in right now if you head on over to life rescripted book.com uh that's where you can kind of get a little heads up uh just put in your email and we let you know as soon as that's all ready and uh, we'll get you a copy of it. But uh, curious to hear what is uh, what's the topic on that your book's going to be for the next one. So one thing that I have learned is to be specific. Figure out who, like you probably have an avatar. Who is my avatar? And my avatar is really a busy professional, someone who's working forty to sixty hours a week. Um, they've got the dis- some disposable income, but They work for five to trade for two. If you've read The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco, trading five for two is a big thing for him. Um, That's that's my avatar, the people who are working too much so that they can escape on the weekends, saving their vacation time, uh, who like me, we had to go out of the country so my phone and my computer wouldn't work or else I would be working because I was spending all my extra time blogging and and podcasting. So that's the avatar and the book is called Exit Strategy, how to to transition from where you feel like you have to be to where you want to be. Working on the tagline part, but I'm only about 25,000 words in, so I'm, I'm I'm not quite done yet. But it was what do people need to know so that they can develop this exit strategy? What are the, what's the overall strategy? What are the specific tactics? And for me, a lot of that has to do with building relationships and building influence through blogging and podcasting, social media, and some of those kinds of things so that people can make this transition from the day job to to borrow the phrase from Carrie Oberbrunner, from day job to dream job. Um, and to build to build that ramp, to make that gradual transition so that you can have you can have this separation from job on your terms instead of like me, where it was that choice wasn't made by me. And talk there's a lot of there's a lot of my story in there because I I really want people to know that if I did it Anything that I've done, people can do the exact same thing because I was completely ignorant and I was relatively average. I didn't know anything about this stuff, and now I do. Now I teach it, coach it. So part of it's story, and then part of it's, okay, here's what you need to do. To do. Here's why people say the money is in the list. Here's why people um, – here's why people blog and things that they talk about and so it goes it's it's both strategy overall and then the the tactics that people can do uh, on a day-to-day or week-to-week basis to build that influence build that online business why online is key um why blogging is so important why podcasting or doing videos are so important um again so people can can formulate their own their own exit strategy very nice. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are tuning in right now that would be interested in that. So what is the best way for people to, to keep track of you and see where you are and, you know, maybe get a little hint as to when that book's going to be coming out? Sure. Um, let me make sure I haven't been to the URL. I haven't I haven't shared it yet outside of my mastermind. I think it is one sec. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah, no problem. If I can spell. <laughs> it's loading. 
Don't you uh, hate that? <laughs> while while we're waiting on on the uh, the book page, okay, there we go. Yeah, go to theexitstrategybook.com. Awesome. Theexitstrategybook.com. You'd be surprised how popular of a phrase exit strategy is. There aren't a whole lot of books like on Amazon or whatever, but um, yeah. There's a lot of domains with exit strategy something in there. Uh, but if you go to theexitstrategybook.com, um, I, I'm, I will eventually want to um, do kind of a behind the scenes about the book, uh, exclusive updates. And that will route you to – it'll it'll maybe eventually have its own site and page, but um, everything else. And that will also route to uh, elleriewells.com and – you know, if that, that busy entrepreneur is you, I provide tips, tools, tricks, resources, tests, and results that you can implement to to help you start, build, or grow your business. And if you do go, by the way, and I just realized or just remembered this when the page uh, pulled up, if you do go to theexitstrategybook.com, that's a, the picture that loads. It won't load probably on a on a phone, may not on a tablet. But if you go on a computer, that's a picture that I took from the sales floor that I used to work in. Okay. And we are it's that's probably um, I don't know what time of day it was. It's probably about nine thirty in the morning. Not everybody had had made it in that day, but we're in there. It's just. It, it's like the boiler room or some other stereotypical sales thing. Uh, if you've ever watched like The Wolf of Wall Street, is that really what what Wall Street looks like? Well, this is this is literally me f- taken on my phone of the sales floor that I used to work in. I mean, it's cubicle nation to the extreme, and we actually were put into pods. We didn't wow. even have four walls anymore or three walls anymore. Um, we shared walls, and there were little like waist high wall. It, it's super fun, Zevin, but that's the actual picture oh, of uh, the last place that I that I worked. I did not like it. <laughs> well, the I, floor swayed. <laughs> what? Because if you notice, there's not a whole lot of support, so I guess there's like huge steel beams or something. I don't know how it was constructed, but the the floor would sway. I'd had a, I had a mirror above my monitor, and it would shake. Oh gosh! Because I don't. I guess big doors were slamming, you know, the warehouse below or something. Uh, I don't know, but it was, it it was, it was not a fun experience, but. Well, I'm glad that you got to get out of there and that thing has (laughs) definitely gotten way better since then. And Ellery, it's been great chatting with you today and uh, definitely look forward to having that book come out. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Zephan. Uh, If anybody has any questions, feel free to, to send them my way. If I can help anybody, I would I would absolutely love to make sure nobody has to go to where they don't they don't enjoy anymore. So that's what I'm here to do. So again, thanks for having me. No problem. This episode of the Year of Purpose is brought to you by our brand new book, Life Rescripted. Find your purpose and design your dream life before the curtains close. If you want to be the first in line to receive a free digital copy from me, all you have to do is head on over to www.liferescriptedbook.com to find out more. I've discovered what I think is the world's most effective process to design your path in life. It'd be a shame if I didn't share it. In Life Rescripted, you will discover the number one strategy for determining your life purpose and how you can start a new path today. The 5X life hack rule for accomplishing your dreams and designing your life on your own terms five times faster. The ultimate solution for fear and how you can leverage it right now to make this year your best year yet, and so much more. Reserve your spot in line to get a free copy at www.liferescriptedbook.com and I will see you in the next episode.